the eyes in my paintings are basically the windows through which the emotions and the experiences and the memories that I have had and want to tell you about uh, where they flow through to the viewer who is observing them. They're usually an ambiguous expression, uh, though the eyes themselves are very expressive. Um, but I want the viewer to sort of finish that little story themselves. It isn't meant to be um, one way. So that ambiguity in the painting uh, allows for that little frame of a story to uh, be personalized by someone. And hopefully that creates a mirror effect in the viewer as they're observing it and they can recognize this emotion and make it their own. I was born and raised in the Dominican Republic um, in a small community that was a mining community, so I was surrounded by nature um, and people from different parts of the world, uh, all the different continents, and so it was this beautiful multicultural um, community within boundaries that were very nature-rich. I think that nature is to me emotion and so you can find it in, in my work in backgrounds. Um, I also grew up traveling a lot to Sweden since my mother is Swedish and I also had that in my background which is this um, uh, second culture that defined me very much since I was a child. I enjoy painting with oil because my manner of expressing myself is mostly um, in a sort of expressionistic manner. I do not sketch usually what I'm going to do first and so I draw immediately on the canvas and as I'm remembering things or as I am changing feelings the story changes and so and so the character changes and using oils is a way for me to pause it doesn't dry as quickly and I can sort of modify that painting as it changes and it usually does. The story of how the girls and their large faces and expressions came to be um, is a little bit funny because they were actually a reaction uh, to a comment that somebody made on that my art maybe was a little too feminine or was becoming too feminine. And um, that was a, a feminist reaction in blowing them up even larger and having them be in your face. Now you cannot escape um, these females. Um, and that, in a sense, later worked in my favor because they became more popular and uh, now they have their own stories to tell and I'm sending even more of them out into the world, so something good came out of that. My current struggle as an artist would be how to keep the themes interesting and the expressions interesting of what I'm currently doing, which is the large faces. How do I keep it fresh and how do I keep viewers engaged? Um, and then the, let's say, broader aspects of a struggle of an artist would be, uh, I think, what a lot of artists feel, which is how to be, um, uh, how to vary my work and continue to be truthful uh, with it without too many outside influences and try to listen to my own voice. I think that that's probably something that most artists will, will face and struggle with at some point. So my first show in Asia is going to be Korea and I'm very excited about that because subliminally in my work I have been influenced by Asian art since I was young, probably with the cartoons that we were seeing either from China, Korea, Japan. And even though those were not my favorite, I don't think uh, subliminally they, they influenced me because I remember reacting to the dramatic expressions and the tears you know, streaming out of the eyes and everything was so dramatic, almost like a Latin telenovela. A good painting or a good work of art to me is a work that can captivate a viewer's emotion and hold it for quite a long time. When you can't stop thinking about a painting or a work of art, a sculpture that you have seen, 
then that communication worked. For me, um, art is basically the most human way of communicating. It is a human telling other humans, this is, these are my feelings, this is who, who we are, or this is who I am. And so when another human being manages to feel something from your work, then you've done your job as an artist, you've, you've succeeded.